the roses that uh, I get pinned on, I, I assure you. I, I feel very honored, though, uh, to be able to bring to you and share with you what God puts on my heart. And uh, he is absolutely right. I, I, I do love my pastor, and I, I do want to uh, be his right hand. I want to be whatever he needs me to be. I have been in that uh, position, and, and, you know, it takes more than one. It takes more than a couple. It takes everybody, amen, to get involved and to get uh, plugged in and to share the vision, amen, that God has put in our, our, our pastor's heart. And uh, we, we all need to get on board. This is not uh, the responsibility of a few. This is each and every one. I, I don't know about you guys. I, if you were here this morning and you heard that message, uh, Sister Katie, I got charged up. I, I, really, I really felt the anointing in that. I think it was a very timely word. And then uh, to be able to go into the, the staff meeting this afternoon and, and have uh, Brother Huey pour more into uh, those of us who are privileged to be there. Uh, man, it's just been a, a blessing all day long. Amen. How many is thankful for God moving? Amen. And God, uh, his presence being uh, manifested in, 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 in our, our congregation, in our midst. Amen. Not just uh, the last couple of Sundays, but I mean, for a while now, I'm just, I'm just amazed at how God is moving. And, and, and listen, if, you, if you're not sensing that, if you're not feeling that, uh, I want to I wanna urge you to, to get in a place where uh, you can. I mean, it's, it's, it's very obvious to me that, that God is moving in Poen uh, Assembly of God. And I, you know, other than the fact that we are, uh, you know, remotely isolated, I guess, uh, we're, we're, I mean, this is not a place that, you know, you would think that God's going to do a mighty work out of. But how many in here would, would, would agree with me? I, I just have a witness, Sister Phyllis, about, God is going to do something magnificent right here in Poen, Arkansas. Amen. And so I'm charged up about that. I am, I am excited about that. And, and how many knows if you're a, a person of faith, if you're a child of God, you are exactly that. You're a, a person of faith. Amen. How many knows that we're called a people of faith? Amen. Now, people of faith should express excitement. Amen. We should express uh, uh, an expectation uh, about what God's doing in our life, Amen. And so I, I want—I've I, been—I've been challenged uh, for the f- past several months to come up to a, a higher level, to come up from where we've been. How many knows that the, uh, Paul wrote in Romans? He said we're going, Pastor, from faith to faith, Amen. We're going from glory. To glory. How many wants to go to the next level of glory? Amen. How many wants to walk in that next level of faith in your life? Amen. I want to challenge you today if I, uh, again, because uh, Dan and them asked for titles, I want to title this uh, message today, Divine Determination. A divine determination. And uh, how many enjoyed the the revival we had with uh, Robbie Mitchell? Amen. I, 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 I... Man, I'm thoroughly uh, was blessed through his ministry, through the anointing, amen, that was obvious uh, in that ministry. And uh, there's some things that I picked up on, on what he said, uh, Brother David. And uh, one of them was, it's great to have a start time. You know where that's going now? <laughs> Bill does. <laughs> it's great to have a start time. We need to have a start time. But we should never, ever Put a time limit on what God's doing. Amen. So we don't have to wait. We don't have to worry. I, I'm not going to worry about it because I, I really, I receive that. I receive that. I'm not going to worry about <laughs> I'm not going to worry about when, if, if the Holy Ghost tells me to shut down, that's when I'm going to shut down. Amen. No, I'm not here to, to, to keep you all night, but I, I have to harass David. He's always giving me a hard time about how long-winded I can be. But uh, I want you to turn, if you can, if you will, in the book of Acts. Chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. And I'm going to uh, just read about three verses here, but I want to kind of set this up for a second if I can. Uh, What I'm going to read is what Paul is addressing. Paul is is writing. These are are his words. 
And uh, if you know anything about Paul, you know that Paul had a, uh, a calling in his life. Amen? And Paul's calling was not always carried out to the capacity that God had intended for it to be carried out. Come on, somebody ought to, ought to see where this is going already. I said, Paul had a calling in his life, and, and he, was, he, was, he was going in a direction that, that God was calling him to, but how many knows it, 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 didn't, it didn't all unfold early on? How many knows that Paul was on the way to Damascus? Anybody read that in Acts chapter 9? You, you know that story? He was on the road to Damascus. He was, he was carrying out what he felt like personally was the will of God for his life. He was, he was out to destroy all of these uh, Christians who were, were, were radicals. They were, they were uh, false uh, uh, people that, that didn't understand God, didn't know God, were not law-abiding citizens. And so Paul was a zealot for God and the service of God. He, he, he really uh, had a, a stirring and he had a passion and a, and a, a compassion, if you will, uh, a desire, he had a determination, Sister Diane, to follow after what God's will was for his life. How I many knows that the church for, for years now, religion has had an agenda? Amen? I said religion has had an agenda, and we have, we have tried to uh, pursue things in our, in our own uh, uh, mind and what we felt like God was doing, but, but how many knows that, that Paul... One day, there was a, a, a change that occurred in his life. I, I, I want to I I set this up because I need you to understand what I'm about to read. I want you to know that Paul, uh, he didn't always have this type of determination, but, but he, he, was, he was still uh, with a, a mental uh, capacity trying to do what God, he felt like God was calling him to do. And I believe that, that, that all of us can, can relate to this. All of us can fall into the, the category of, of being uh, uh, aware of, of God's calling, being, being uh, we can have a mental ascent to God's existence. We can know that there's a purpose that God has, and we can go under our own uh, abilities to try to, to, to fulfill that, and we can be zealot, uh, zealous about it. We can be eager about it. We can be determined even but without, amen, the Spirit of God, without an encounter, a real-life encounter, amen, with Jesus Christ, listen, everything that we do, and that's, that's what I'm here tonight, that's what I'm, I'm trying to charge us here tonight, to, to understand that all of us have a calling, but without the anointing, without the Spirit, amen, of Jesus Christ, without the calling and the election being made sure in your life, amen, everything will be for naught, but God is calling us to a higher place. We're going from glory, come on, listen to me, to a higher place. We're going from glory to glory. We're going from faith to faith. God is not going to leave you, amen, where you are, but he's going to bring you up to a higher place, amen. How many knows that's true? I preached the message before. I just want to kind of interject a piece of it right here. How many knows Abraham had a vision. God had shared a vision with Abraham. He, he, uh, uh, he, he told him, he, he said, Abraham, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Amen? Abraham's about 75 years of age whenever he gets this, uh, this vision from God. And, and so you can imagine how already there's, there's a, 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 a seed of doubt that might would rise up in, in Abraham. But listen, he's a friend of God. God sees something in Abraham. How many wants God to see something in you? Amen. God needs, I want God to see something in me. Amen. That, that even if a seed of doubt would rise up, he's going to know, you know, that I, I, I'm going to do. Amen. Or I'm going to believe. I'm going to pursue after. I'm going to follow after. Amen. Whatever it is that he says I am or that I have. Abraham was that guy, amen, and so he said, Abraham, he brought him out of the tent one night. He said, Abraham, come out here. I, wanna, I want you to look up into the night sky, and I believe uh, on that particular night, God probably uh, turned up the lights just a little bit on the stars, amen, and they were, they were, they were gleaming, beaming just a little bit uh, brighter than what they normally did, and he said, Abraham, I want you to, to tell me, can you number the stars in the sky? And, of course, we know Abraham's response was, 
was absolutely no, I, I, there's no way. He said, so shall the number of thy seed be. Amen. Y'all come on in, praise God. So shall the number of thy seed be. He said, now Abraham, I want you to look down the, uh, the, the, the seashore. I want you to look down uh, uh, the, the beach here. And I want you to tell me, can you number the, 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 the granules of sand on the seashore, can you tell me how many they are? And, and Abraham said, of course, Lord, you know I can't number. There's just too many. Amen. It's just an infinite number. And God said, so shall your seed be. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you. Now, listen, Abraham's in a place. He's 75 years old. He's not feeling like, come on, somebody hear me. He's not feeling like I'm going to father one, much less an infinite number. Come on, now listen, God's speaking to us tonight. He's, he's, he's telling us, listen, he's got a calling in your life. He's taking you from where you are, amen, to a higher place. And some of you are saying, I just don't feel it. <laughs> I just don't feel it. You know, the way my life's going, the way things are going uh, uh, around me and in my family, I'm just not feeling. How many knows your feelings will get you in trouble? I mean, you better, you better step out and believe what God said above how you feel. Amen. And so the time comes, and we know the story. Abraham tried to do it on his own, and it's kind of what I'm talking about with Paul earlier. Paul tried to do some things on his own, made a mess out of some stuff, didn't he? And we're still suffering because of Abraham and Sarah's uh, decision to try to do something on their own. It's still affecting us today. Over 4,000 years later, we're still paying the price for them trying to do what God said he was going to do. Come on, church, you better listen to me tonight. We're going to pay a price if we try to do things our way, if we try to do things outside of the will of God for us, amen, outside of the word of God, outside of God's direction, we're going to pay a price for it tonight, amen. We better stick to what he says, amen, only what he says, despite how you feel. And so Abraham receives the promise, though, and uh, Isaac comes along, and God challenges him. And he says, listen, I'm telling you, God's taking us to another place. He said, Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son. Listen, he didn't even recognize his fleshly work. Are you hearing me? I said, he didn't even recognize, he didn't even acknowledge Ishmael. He said, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, and I want you to go to a place I'm going to show you, and I want you to sacrifice him. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Abraham is so... Attached, Abraham is so connected to God. Brother Jonas, he, he, there's, there's, there's no doubt in his mind that he has received the promise of God and that if God takes him, he will in like manner, amen, bring him back and give him back to him, amen. Listen, we need some faith like Abraham, amen, to believe no matter what it looks like, no matter what the circumstances say, no matter what the doctor report says, come on, somebody, no matter what's going on in your children's life, no matter what's going on in your job, no matter what's going on in the economy, no matter what's going on in the Supreme Court justice, we need to know, amen, that the words of God are yea and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Watch this. They're at the bottom of Mount Moriah. And Abraham has brought Isaac with him, and he's brought the wood, and he's brought the, uh, the things that are necessary to make the, the, the sacrifice. And he brings two servants for him. Now, I want you to watch what he says. He says, I want you to wait here. Come on. While the lad and I go yonder. Come on, somebody. I said, God's taking us from glory to glory. Anybody ever had heard somebody say to you, you, you can't get there from here. <laughs> you got to go over there and start. Huh? Listen, God's trying to take this church here. I believe this. I, I believe this. I, I know God's move. It's not just a, a, a stirring. It's not just because God ain't got nothing better to do. I believe there's a direction, amen, that God's bringing us to. Amen. I believe that God's trying to take us to another place. Amen. I, I, I know that, that God has a purpose for Poe in Arkansas. And Abraham said, I want you, you guys, hang out right here because the lad and I, 
Come on, sometimes you, you need to hear me today. Sometimes you're going to have folk to come to church with you. Sometimes you're going to have folk to sit in the seat next to you. Sometimes you're just going to have to look over to them and say, look, you might well just hang out right here because me, huh? Me, I'm, I'm going, I'm going yonder. I'm going to, I'm going to another place. You, you wait here if that's what you got to do, huh, Daniel? If, if you need to wait here, you wait here. But I, I, I'm going, I'm going to another place. I'm going to a place. Listen, he said, I'm going yonder. That's the King James uh, uh, vernacular on that. The, the, the NIV may say, so, say something else. But it, it says he's going, he's going to another place. And, and you and I need to be in that place spiritually where no matter what everybody else is doing, no matter what, how everybody else is responding to what God's doing, amen, in our midst tonight, in these, in these days that we're uh, uh, living in, amen, no matter what everybody is, how, however they may be responding, they may sit there like a knot on the log. That's all right. Listen, you need to understand, God's taking you to a higher place. God's taking you to another place. Amen. Your circumstances cannot dictate what God is going to do in your life. You can't, you can't get there from where you are. Huh? Where God's taking you, you can't get there from where you are. You got to, you got to go to a place higher amen and abraham goes up to that place how difficult i mean I, i've got kids i got six of them i i raised and i've got daughter-in-laws now and i've got grandchildren and we've got three more coming in in february i tell everybody we're about to be 21 strong <laughs> praise god but i could not fathom doing what god called abraham to do. But Abraham had such a connection, had such a relationship, had such faith that God would provide, amen, everything that he said he was going to provide. Amen. And whenever he got to that place, mm, and he raised that hand up and he's willing to, 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 to make the sacrifice that God had, had challenged him with, and that angel stayed his hand. And he said, Abraham, now I know. Huh? I believe God already knew. I think he wanted Abraham to know. Uh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You're going through a trial. You're going through a hard place. You're going through a hard time. Hey, Amen. God's calling you through this thing. Come on, God said God's calling you through this thing. Hey, Amen. I love the, uh, the 23rd Psalm. Everybody, we're, we're, most of us can probably quote it. Hey, Amen. But he talks about how David's going through the, uh, the valley of the shadow of death. Hey, Amen. And he fears no evil. He said, because my, your, your rod and your staff is with me, they, they comfort me. I want you to understand what David's doing. He's going through something. Huh? I said, all of us are called. We're going to go through some things. Amen. I love the fact that he's going through there. There's too many of us that we've forgotten all about going through, and we've decided to pitch a tent. Amen. We, we, we've decided that we're just going to camp out here for a while. Listen, God never intended for you to stay there. God never intended you for, for you to get holed up in this place of bondage. Amen. He said, you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. We have a Father God who has taken us through. Amen. He's with you. Even in the most seemingly difficult situations and circumstances, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're going through, listen, God is with you. Amen. He's, he, you, you uh, I, I forget. It was on Facebook, I think I, I saw this. And, 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 and it, was, it was about a, a young boy, and this, I don't know if it was a, an Indian tribe or I can't remember exactly what the, the stage was, but uh, this young boy had to, to prove his, his manhood. And so the father took him out in the middle of the, the woods late at night, put a blindfold on him, and he had to sit there in the dark all night long until the sun come up the next morning. Couldn't take the blindfold off, couldn't get up and leave, had to sit there. Now listen, I want, you to, I want you to imagine this. The devil will feed your mind huh, with so much, so much junk, with so many lies, amen. He'll, he'll, he'll cause you to think that there are things there that are not remotely there, amen. But listen, this young man, 
you know, I know, I know most, most of them, but I, I was, uh, as, as a young boy, I, was, I, I didn't like to be outside in the dark by myself. But the story went that this young man sat there all night, and he had all these imaginations how some kind of wild beast may come up and, and try to uh, eat him, you know, while he's alive or, or attack him, and, and he would just be uh, defenseless and probably taken out, and, and all of these things, all these imaginations. And listen, church, you and I, if we're not careful, listen, we'll feel like that God has left us alone. We'll feel like we're the ones sitting out there in the middle of the, uh, of the night in, in, in the woods and we don't, we don't know where we're at and we don't know which way our enemy may be coming from or, or what kind of advancement that the enemy may be trying to make upon us and, and, and it'll cause us to fear and we will get up and we'll, we'll try to run out of there, amen. But listen, the, uh, the, not the, the, the story went on to say that the next morning after the sun had come up, the boy removed the blindfold. And sitting next to him was his father. Had been there all night long. Huh? Been there all night long. Never left his side. You and I need to remember, amen, no matter what we're going through, our father. Come on, he's sitting right next to us. No matter how hard it looks, no matter how dangerous it may seem, no matter how much adversity may rise up, come on, we've got a father. He's been sitting there all along. Amen. Been watching over you all through the night. Amen. Come on. Uh, uh, listen, it, he, listen. I, I, I forget exactly the, 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 the wording on it, but, you, you know, the, the, the word declares to us that uh, tragedy and, and, and all those things may come for the night, but listen, joy. <laughs> he said, joy comes in the morning. Amen. Amen. We know that, listen, we have an advocate. We have a father, amen, that loves us dearly. I want you to know tonight, he's taking us from glory to glory. He's going, we're, we're, we're not, oh, I, I guess I, I'm excited thinking about what God's going to do. Brother Huey brought out this morning the scripture in Habakkuk, and he's talking about the glory of the Lord, the, the glory uh, of the knowledge of the Lord is going to be made throughout the whole earth like the water covers the sea in Habakkuk 14, uh, 2 and 14, rather. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I know that there has to be an end-time revival that goes on. I'm not telling you that I believe it's going to be worldwide, but I believe that there's going to be a revival that takes place, Amen where God is going to pour out his spirit, amen, in such a way. I know God's already pouring out his spirit. I know that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost showed up, amen, and, and there come a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared upon each one of them cloven tongues as a fire, amen, and they all began to speak in other tongues as the spirit uh, gave them utterance, amen. They were filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, and, and Peter stood up on that day, having missed it many times before, but now himself being filled with the power of God, being filled with the Holy Ghost, stood up and made the proclamation, this is that. Come on, somebody, that was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that I'm going to pour out my spirit in the last day. Amen. How many knows we are in the last days? We need to be seeking God's spirit. We need to be seeking, amen, the spirit of God. I'm going to read my scripture now. <laughs> Acts chapter 20, verse 22 says this, And now, Paul speaking, Behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. How many knows that God's going to send you Amen. And you're not going to always know what's in front of you. Amen. I've, I've heard this uh, uh, years ago, and it just stuck with me. But, you know, the Navy, uh, they give these, these uh, admirals, uh, they'll give them orders or, or the captains of the ships, whichever, whoever's running the ship. And they'll be closed. They won't know where they're going. And their, their orders is, is this that you go to a certain location, and when you get to that place, you open up these orders. Huh? And then when you open these orders, when you get to that place, you're going to know where to go to the next place. I mean, how many knows that's, that's, that's how God operates? Amen. He told Abraham, he said, listen, Abraham, look, I, I, want, you to, I want you to see this. Uh, Terah was Abraham's father. And in Genesis 
uh, 11, at the end of Genesis 11, it says that Terah and Abraham and, and, and Haran, they were headed to uh, uh, the promised land. They were headed to Canaan. But they came to this place called Haran. And when they got there, the Bible said that Terah dwelt there. And there he died. Anybody getting that? God's called him to a, a, a place. He's called him to a higher place. But he got to a place called Haran. And the Bible said that he dwelt there, and there he died. I want you to know that it's possible that God can call you to a certain place. God's calling you to a higher place. But listen, if you get to a certain place, somebody hear me now. And, and I believe that this place called Haran was, was probably a, a, looked like it was a, a lush green pasture land, good for the cattle, probably had some uh, uh, really pretty uh, little creeks running through it, good water spot, just look a good, like a good place to just settle in for a little while. Huh? And you and I, we can, we can be on our journey, amen. God, God has called us to be on this spiritual journey, and we can be on our journey. Listen, we can get to a place, amen, that looks real comfortable for us. Huh? We can get to that place where, where we, don't, we don't feel like we need to go any further because, listen, pastor, this is where we need to be. We're, we're in a place that, that feels good, amen. We, we, we're, we're in a nice air-conditioned building, got these padded pews, amen, nothing wrong with that. I love it. Good lighting, praise God. Good preaching, good preaching. Here, amen, have me say amen. Good preaching, amen. And we can get settled in. We can get sit down there, amen, and we can... Come on, somebody hear me. You not got to the place that God's called you to go yet. You get to that place of, of complacency. You get to that place where you're comfortable, amen. You'll sit right there and you will die. Huh? The church is full of people like that all over the nation today. We've got to a place of complacency. We've got to a place where, listen, all I want to do is go in what Brother Ed says nearly every time he preaches, punch my God clock, sit down, amen, get me out of here by noon today so I can beat the Baptist down to the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Amen. Love, love the Baptist. Amen, I love it. Love the Methodist. But that's not where Tara was supposed to go, Pastor. God had called him to go to Canaan. And he didn't make it there. I want you to see the severity of this. I want you to see, understand the, how dangerous this is. Amen. That you get into a place where you're comfortable, amen, and you don't feel a need to go any further. You don't need to feel, you don't, you don't see the need to step out. Amen. Take that step of faith. One more step. Come on, Brother Dean, one more step. Let's keep going. But I can't see what's in front of me, Brother Ed. I don't know what's out. I don't care. God said go. Let's take another step. Amen. How many knows you'll get light as you continue? Amen. You're going to get, you, you, you have to operate in the light you're in. I understand that. But the only way you're going to get more light is to step out. You got to step out. And so Abraham after his father passes away, he doesn't fulfill, he doesn't reach the, the promised land. He doesn't get to the place that God's calling him to. He calls Abraham out. He says, Abraham, I want you to get your wife, Sarah. I want you to get up, get away from your kindred. I want you to go to a place that I'm going to show you. Abraham tells his wife, You got to love pastor's wives because they got to go where God sends them. And it's not always easy to leave your family. It's not always easy to leave that place of complacency where you're comfortable at, it's something that's familiar to you. It's not always easy to do that. But Abraham told Sarah, honey, pack your stuff up. We got to go. We got to leave the things that are familiar. We got to leave the things that are comfortable to us, and we got to step out and go. And you know, I'm sure Sarah 
I'm sure Sarah, Brother Mike, was, 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 was no different than, than the rest of our wives. She's, she's probably got the question, where, where are we going, honey? <laughs> you have to follow him anyway. Yeah. And Abraham said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where we're going. Come on now. I, I want to I stand before you today and, and I want to tell you, I, I know God's taken us somewhere else. I know God's taken us to a higher place. But listen, I cannot tell you exactly where that place is. I just know that it's to a higher place. Amen. I know that God's taken us to a place other than where we are, and we can't get there from where we're at. We've got to, we've got to have our mind made up, amen, that we're going, we're going through, we're going on, amen, we're not staying here, amen, that we're not going to get comfortable in this place, amen, I'm not satisfied just being satisfied with where I am, amen, but I have a hunger, I have a thirst, amen, for the greater things in God, amen. I want you to have a hunger and a thirst, church. Come on, somebody get with me. Come on, somebody get with me. We were told today, listen, this is not a, this is not a one man, two man, three man, four man show. Listen, it takes every one of us. Yeah. Amen, all of us. Come on. Uh, we, we, we talked about the book of Acts a while ago, how uh, the spirit fell in that place on that day. Amen, the Bible said they were all in oh, one mind, one accord. Huh? They were all had the same agenda. God, I need more of you. I need less of me, like John said. I must decrease, but he must increase. Amen. My goodness, I hadn't even got through my scripture yet. I'm hurrying, David. Let me read again. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. That's what got me started on all that. Say that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions Abide me. I want you to catch that. Has anybody ever thought or been deceived or lied to and said, you know, you, you come to know the Lord and, and, and you just get on easy street after that? Huh? Nobody will praise God. But it's amazing how many people live that way. It's amazing how many people come to the Lord and they're, they're under this false impression that my life is supposed to get so much better. Here we have a man who was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was the poster child for the scribes and the Pharisee, Pharisaical people. He had the knowledge of the law, I'm sure he could probably quote all of it, forward and backward. He had such a zeal for religion and for God. But let me tell you something, people. One day, he had a real, you better listen to me. I'm not, I'm not saying he walked down the aisle and shook somebody's hand and said a little prayer that meant absolutely nothing to him. I said he had a real encounter with Jesus. And from that time on, something happened. There was a stirring, amen. There was, there was a, a, a spirit that rose up in Paul, amen, that knew that he had a purpose, that knew he had a destiny, amen, in his life. Come on, somebody, I want you to hear me tonight. There's not a single person sitting under the sound of my voice tonight. You better not think that you don't have exactly the same thing. God's got a purpose. God's got a destiny, amen, in each and every one of your lives, amen. And until you hear what, or until you find out what that is, it's going to be real easy for you to get complacent. It's going to get real easy for you to just get comfortable and say, well, you know, I'm just going to let Brother Ed do it. I'm just going to let Brother Mike do it. I'm just going to let uh, pastors, uh, whoever, er, er, they can do it. No. No. You're going to have to do it too. Amen. You've got a calling in your life. And I want to tell you right now, you are going to face bonds <laughs> and afflictions. You're going to go through some things, amen. Not everybody's going to agree with you. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to love you. Not everybody's going to accept you. 
Huh? Some people are going to are, are not only not going to accept you, but they're going to resist you. But you better have your mind made up. Well, come on. Here's, here's the meat of my message right here. I said, you better have your mind made up. You better be determined. Huh? I'm not stopping. I'm not backing up. I'm not quitting. I'm not slowing down. Amen. I'm going forward. Amen. How many, how many ever read about the shooting my woman? Amen. She had an encounter with the man of God who promised her that she would have a son. Amen. Uh, this time next year, uh, and, and she said, man of God, you better not be telling me something that's not true. That's my personal interpretation. Don't tell me something that's false. And whenever she got a hold of that word, come on, somebody. I said, when she got a hold of that word, amen, it got in her. There's something in her spirit that changed, amen. She wasn't like she was before, amen. But now there's something in her that's created a faith in her that will not be shaken, that will not be moved, amen. She's got her mind made up. I know my God will provide for me. So the very promise that she receives Falls dead one day in the field, hits his head on the rock out in the field with his father. And like the rest of us dads, he says, send him to his mother. Amen. And so she goes, uh, the, the, the servants bring him to his mama, and he's still, I guess, a little bit with it or alive at that time still. She's rocking him on her knee. Huh? What do you wonder what's going through her mind as she's rocking that baby on her knee? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> Come on, somebody, I need you to see this. This boy has hit his rock, uh, hit his rock, hit his head on a rock. And to the natural eye, this don't look good. Come on, I, I want you to see how doubt, I mean, I want you to see how the enemy works. Hmm? Uh, he, he's not, this was, this was a promise. This was a promise. This is, this is what God, God had give, God's given you. Listen, God's calling us to a higher place. I want you to hear me. And you're going to see some things between now and the place you're going. You're going to see some things that's going to cause doubt to rise up in you. You're going to be able, you're going, you're going to start to second guess. You're going to be, you're going to start, well, I wonder if I heard from God. I, I wonder if Brother Ed's just up there uh, uh, spitting all over us and, 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 and maybe, maybe that's not act. No. No, listen, she believed the promise over the situation. She believed the word of God over her circumstance, over the situation, over the crisis that she's going through. She believes the word of God over all of that. She commands, she calls for two servants. She says, come and, and, and saddle me a donkey. Listen, we're going to go, she said, we're going to go. Anybody know? She said, we're going to go forward. And she commanded, listen, this, this servant, whoever it was, she commanded, don't you even slow up. Don't you even slack off. Come on, we need to get a determination in us. We need to get our mind made up. That no matter what kind of bonds, no matter what kind of afflictions come against us, we are going to be determined. We're going to be determined. We're going to believe the word of God over anything that, that may put itself or present itself in front of us. We're going to believe the word of God. Drive forward. Go forward. Listen, faith never backs up. Faith don't never stand still. Faith is always going forward. Never stops until she gets to the man of God. Watch this. Whenever she gets to the man of God, Elisha, he's looking out there, Pastor. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. You know what he says? He says, yonder, uh, yonder is that Shunammite woman. Come on. Everybody in the house ought to be shouting right now. You, you, you hear what I'm telling you? He said, yonder, 
How I many know she couldn't get to where she needed to be from where she was? Amen. She needed to get to a, a higher place. I, I, I said God was taking her to a higher place. Amen. This boy is dead as a doornail. He is not breathing. There's no life in his body. And God needs to take her to a higher place. And so he calls her in her faith, go forward, don't stop, amen, till you get to the man of God. And whenever she gets there, he recognizes and says to his servant, yonder, yonder, yonder. Is that Shunammite woman? Sometimes you and I, we need to go to a place, amen, for others. He instructs his servant, he says, go to her. And when Gehazi gets to her, he begins to greet her. How's things back at the farm? All is well. How's your husband? All is well. How's your son? All is well. Huh? You see, she, she couldn't get where God was taking her from where she was. She, she had to go to another place. Come on, church. I'm telling you, this is a word from God tonight. We, well, all of us, we need to understand God's taking us to a higher place. And Paul said this. Say that the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Watch this. Paul said, but none of these things move me. Come on, somebody. Paul had his mind made up. He was determined. There was going to be nothing. Nothing is going to move me. Amen. I know I have a purpose. I know I have a destiny in my life. I know I'm going somewhere. Amen. I, I can't get to where God's trying to take me from where I am. Amen. I got I to get myself in a place. Come on, somebody. God will allow you to get yourself in a place. Oh, my goodness. This is a, this is a holy God. I said God will allow you to get yourself in a place where you need to go to a higher place. Come on. Amen. To, to receive, amen, what the word of the Lord is saying to you, what the Lord, uh, where the Lord is promising you. Amen. God will allow you to get into a place where you've got to go higher. And you better have your mind made up, honey. You better have your, your determination boots on. Amen. You better know that it's struggle that brings strength. Advancement only comes through adversity. I know I don't want to sound repetitious tonight, but I want you to understand that it's going to take a made-up mind. You and I are going to have to be determined. We're going to face some things. Amen. This church, since I've been here in the last almost two years, I've seen some adversity, amen, that we've gone through. I've seen some things that we've had to face. I've seen some, some, some things that would be very discouraging, amen, to any pastor, any, any, any lead pastor team, amen, any congregation, I've seen some things that would, that would probably just dishearten many and cause them to walk out the doors, and you know what, it's exactly done that, but listen, you and I are still here, you and I, we have a calling, amen, we have a purpose, we have a destiny in our life, and I was talking to Sister Phyllis before the service started tonight about how, you know, hurtful that, that, that these things can, can be, amen, how discouraging these things can be, but listen, she and I agreed, amen, we've got our mind made up, amen, I'm not leaving, amen, I'm not going nowhere, come on, I'm staying right here, I'm going to see the purpose of God fulfilled, amen, in this house, I know what God has told me, I know what God has shown me, amen, I share the vision of my pastor, I'm going to follow him, amen, I'm going to support him, I'm going to stand behind him, amen, I'm going to get with him, amen, the congregation should all say, amen. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to wrap up. I really am. Paul, Paul said, none of these things move me. Beethoven, at the age of five, played the violin masterfully. By the time he turned 13 years of age, he was an accomplished pianist. He, he, he could play the piano. By the time he was 20, he studied under Mozart 
And he had written like nine symphonies at this time. But it was about that time of age that he began to lose his hearing. And by the time he had reached the age of 50, he was stone cold deaf. Could not hear. (laughs) And it was after this period of time that he had gone stone cold deaf that he had written his greatest symphonies. And you know what Beethoven did to accommodate his his loss of hearing? He sawed the legs off on his piano. And he got it all the way down on the ground. And he laid down on the ground with it so that he could feel the vibrations. Amen. He had music in him. Amen. And that's how he could get it out. (laughs) Come on, somebody. I said, you got the Spirit of God in you tonight. I said, every one of you, amen, if you've received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've got his spirit. He's a res- he has setting up, set up residency in you. You have his spirit. You better figure out what it's going to take to get it out. Come on, it needs to come out. It needs to come out, somebody. Listen, it was said that he was heard pounding on the keys of his piano one night, saying that he would not be defeated. Life would not defeat him. Life would not get him down. Amen, but he would take life by the throat. Huh? He said he, 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 they heard him say he would take life by the throat and he would not allow it to defeat him. Amen. That encouraged me. I, 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 I saw that on the uh, internet the other day and I thought, God, I, I wish, I, I want that kind of determination. I want that kind of, uh, of fortitude. Amen. Uh, I, I want that kind of uh, uh, ability to, 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 no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter what uh, seemingly over uh, consequential circumstances are going on in my life, amen, I need your spirit, come on, to rise up inside of me, come out of me, amen, be able to make beautiful music, come on, I want to be a blessing to people. By the way, the, the, the dictionary's definition of determination is simply this, one who has a made up mind, one who is unwavering, in actions and attitudes. One determination, one who has a made up mind, one who is unwavering in actions and in attitudes. Amen. None of these things move me. Jacob, coming from the lineage of Abraham, met with the angel of the Lord one night. He was not the most qualified. He was not the most entitled. He was not the best looking. But somebody hear me tonight. He was the most determined. And the Bible clearly tells us that he got a hold of this angel of the Lord, and he began to wrestle with him. And early in the story, it tells where the the angel had touched him in the hollow of his thigh. Now, the hollow of the thigh is where the, the, the leg and the, and the hip socket come together. And this angel touches him in the hollow of his thigh. And so I want you to understand something. That's, that's not something that, that feels very good. Hear me now. I said determination. I said none of these things move me. I said unwavering in our actions and in our attitudes. I'm talking about somebody with a made-up mind. Jacob displayed all of that when he held on to that angel and he got that hip dislocated, amen, from his leg. Don't you know that was painful? Mm. And from that time on, mm, Jacob walked a little different. (laughs) Come on, somebody hear me. I said, when God touches you, your walk is going to be a little different. Amen. I said, you're going to look a little different. Amen. But listen, that's, that's not the main point I want to bring out. And that I want you to understand that even despite the pain, the obvious pain that Jacob was going through, he still held on. 
He was still holding on to the angel. He refused to let go. Amen. Sometimes whenever you get hurt during the fight, all you can do is quit fighting and start holding on. Listen, God is going to bless you. The, the, the man of God, Jacob, told the angel that night, listen, I'm not letting go until you bless me. I said his mind was made up. He had a determination. Amen. He was not letting go. He was not wavering. But he was clinging. He was holding fast to. And you and I better learn, amen, in this hour that we live in. Listen, I, this pathetic governmental ineptitude that you and I are having to endure. Listen, I, I'm going to tell you, it's not going to get better. Brother... Ed talked about it this morning, and, and, and he talked about how, you know what, we, we're going we gonna to have to endure something. Listen, you and I need to rise up. Amen. Stand for what's right. I'm not telling you to be ugly to people. I'm not saying that we need to go and, and start beating people over the head with the Bible or nothing like that. I'm saying we, you and I have a responsibility, amen, to represent, amen, the Word of God, amen, in its truth. Yes. Lovingly. But I'm telling you, this is only the tip of the iceberg. But I, I, here's what I want you to know. None of those things move me. I said none of those things move me. I, I, I'm not discouraged. Amen. God's going to accomplish what God's going to accomplish despite what the United States of America does or does not do, no matter what kind of uh, economic uh, downfall that, that this world is in, no matter what's going on around us. Listen, we got to get the mindset. We've got to get determined. None of this moves me. My mind is made up. Amen. I choose to believe the word of God over every situation, over every circumstance in my life. Amen. I believe God. I have a destiny. I have a purpose. And that's what Paul was holding on to. The Syrophoenician woman came to the disciples one night while they were sitting with Jesus. She had a need. Come on, I really am closing. She had a need, and she began to cry out on behalf of her daughter. Anybody got kids in here? Huh? I got six of them. God loves Oh, I got to tell this little story. My, uh, I had a pastor before. He told the story, and I just remember it. But this little old lady came to his church on a regular basis, and her testimony, every time she was asked to stand up and testify, was simply this. God gave me five kids, and she'd stomp her foot on the ground, and she'd say, the devil can't have one of them. Huh? That sounds to me like, Brother Greg, she, she had a made-up mind. She, 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 listen. Ain't no telling what kind of hell her kids were living in. Ain't no telling what, what they were doing. But listen, brother, Baldwin, she, she, had, she had her mind made up. God gave me five boys. They were all boys. And the devil can't have one of them. Come on, I've adopted that myself. I don't know about you, but listen, I got six kids. Mm, the devil ain't getting one of them. I don't care what they into. I don't care what they living like right now. None of that moves me. I said none of that moves me. My mind is made up. My God is greater than anything that they may be involved with. Hey Amen. I pray for my children on a regular basis. I do. And I, 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 this is my prayer. And I tell them this too. I want you to know that your daddy's praying that you get no peace and no joy in your life until you're where you need to be in relationship with him. Huh? So whenever you're going through those hard times, kids, just remember daddy's praying. I got six of them, amen, and the devil can't have one of them because my mind's made up. And those disciples said, send her away. She's crying to us. She's crying to us. And so she looks to Jesus I mean, knows that's, that's where we got to go. Yeah. Yeah. I said, that's where we got to go. And he says, you know, healing 
is the children's bread. And made reference to her as a dog. And watch this. Her response was, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And I could just imagine, I can only imagine Jesus. Hey Amen. I, I, I'm sure his eyes lit up. He probably said, oh, my. Oh, my. Who let the dogs out? Huh? He said, be it unto you according as you have said. Amen. Amen. When you get your attitude in a place, you get your, your, your mind made up, amen, no matter what's going on, no matter who tells you no, I don't care how many no's you get, I don't care how many naysayers you run into, I don't care how many family members tell you you're crazy for going to church and following God and living for God the way you do, you need to stand up and tell them, listen, my mind's made up, none of these things move me. Amen. Stand to your feet. <clears throat> Here's what I want to wrap up tonight's word with. And this is, the Lord really impressed upon me. To, to do the very best I know how. To impart to you that this is his word. For each and every one of us in this house tonight. I believe it's for every person that comes, but, but, but specifically, I, I believe that this is a divine appointment tonight. If you're here tonight, it's not by accident. I believe God has a specific word for you. I believe this word is for every one of us. But I want to wrap up with this. You can love God. You can live for God. You can be obedient to God. You can do the things that God's called you to do, and you're still you're still going to have to go through some things. And God showed me this through David's life. And David was at a place called Ziklag. Most of you know the story. And while out doing the things that God had called him to do, the enemy came in. Listen to me. I said the enemy came in and stole everything that belonged to him. Took his family, took his wives, his children, all of his belongings, took everything. So now I want you to imagine with me if you can. Here's David, called of God, king of Israel, out doing the king's business. And he comes back to this place and he finds that the enemy has come in and taken everything from him. I don't know about you, but I would find that very disheartening, very discouraging. But I have to believe that God, that, that excuse me, that David had a, a faith in his God. And friends, tonight, that's, that's, that's really what I hope to instill in, in all of us is, is that we've got to have a faith in our God despite what's going on in our life, despite what kind of losses we may encounter or go through. And so David, rather than throwing up his hands and saying, you know what, I just can't live this. It's just too hard. And, and, and no matter which way I turn, I'm doing everything I know to do for God. And I just, I just seem like every way I turn, I'm running into more hard times. Instead of doing that, David said, bring me that prayer shawl. I need to talk to God. And so that's what I'm going to invite you to do tonight. You don't have to stay long, but I'm going to invite you to, 
whosoever will. Because I know that this word is for every person in this house tonight. It's not just for a handful. It's for all of us. And I'm just going to ask whosoever will. David got down under that prayer shawl, and he began to pray to the Lord. And his prayer was simply this, God, what would you have me do? And the word that God gave to David is the word that he impressed upon me to say to you this evening. The word was simply this, pursue. Come on, everybody, tonight, I, I, hear me. None of these things move me. Whatever you're going through, no matter what the enemy has stolen from you, no matter what the enemy has taken from your life, I want you to know tonight, Pastor's absolutely right. I love you. <laughs> I wish you knew how much I love you. I wish, I, I wish you knew how much he loves you. But more than that, I want you to know how much God loves you. And his word to you tonight is simply this, pursue. And he said, doubtless you shall recover everything. Now, I know it's not real easy for us to see that whenever we come back and everything looks like it's been burnt down, charred. Everything's gone. It's not easy in the natural for us to see those things being restored to us. But listen, the word tonight is pursue. And so David gathered up those men that were able to go, and they pursued. And when they got there, those Chaldeans were having themselves a, a party with the things that they had taken. And I know tonight it seems like the enemy, Satan, would just take everything we have and just, just, just use it and abuse it, have himself... Uh, a, a, a little party. I'm going to tell you something. I believe this. Whenever those Chaldeans saw David and those men pursuing after, I believe there was a fear that come up in their heart. And they knew, huh, we done messed up. Now I say that because I want you to understand that if you're obedient tonight, spiritually speaking, if you're obedient tonight and you begin to pursue after those things that the enemy has taken from you, amen, whenever you begin to come, when you begin to advance, when you begin to go forward, amen, in faith, and you begin to come up on the enemy and he sees you, listen, I believe there's going to come up a, a fear. I believe there's going to be a fear that stirs up in the, in the heart of the enemy. But watch me. Listen to me. As long as you see it, and do nothing. As long as you allow the circumstances and the attacks, the bonds, the afflictions, as long as you allow those things to defeat you, that's exactly what you'll be. And you will not achieve that higher place that God's calling you to go to. So here's the challenge tonight. And again, I, you, you stay as long as you want to, and I really am not dismissing. But you stay as long as you want to. I'm going to invite everybody that would, please come to these altars tonight. Would you come and just spend a few minutes in prayer before the Lord tonight? Would you come tonight? Come on. Just come and spend a few minutes in prayer tonight. Amen. Let's, let's make up our minds tonight. God, I'm going to believe your word. I'm going to believe your promises. I'm going to stand in faith. I know I'm headed into bonds. I know I'm headed into afflictions. But God, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Come on, church, we need to get the attitude and the mindset, I'm going to take life by the throat. huh? When sickness comes against me, I'm going to take it by the throat. I ain't, I'm not going to let this thing overcome me. I'm not going to let this thing defeat me. When finances are, are not where they need to be and, and it doesn't look like the provision's going to be uh, what it ought to be, listen, I'm going to take life by the throat. I'm going to allow the Spirit of God to rise up in me. I'm not going to let these addictions rule my life any longer. I'm going to take control of my life.
I'm not going to stay where I am. I'm going to a higher place. Thank you, Jesus.
Holy Spirit right now I would pray that you would burrow just a little bit deeper in us that Father where we are comfortable to be broken God I pray break us just a little bit more where we're comfortable to come to a place take us a little bit deeper that Father I pray if we're hungry to see something we've never seen then, God, we've got to be able to do some things we've never done. We're going to have to feel some things we've never felt. That, Father God, it's going to take just a little bit more. Father, I pray, help us to go just a little bit higher so that we can go a little bit farther, so we can see something a little bit greater. That, Father, we can have you to a greater degree than we've ever had. My God, let us be ready. Let us be willing. We want you, Jesus. We want you. We want you. I want you. I want you. I am not content, Lord God. Even in my own walk, even in my own place with you, I am not content. I want more. Come on, somebody. I want more. Help me to be able to to let you take me deeper. Mm. 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 Jesus. Jesus.
Jesus. want you to think for a second where's the closest you've ever been to God when's the thickest you've ever felt his presence in your life I'll tell you the greatest probably 99.9% of us the greatest place we have ever felt the presence of God was while we're in the middle of the crucible when we're in the middle of going through the hardest things of our life that is when we find God the most because that's when we come to Him the hardest. In my own life, and probably yours too, allow God to take these hard times of life and turn it into a fine grain of sandpaper. That not only knocks the rough edges off of you, but it causes the grain inside of you to pop out. It makes the character inside of you to come out. It makes the strength of God inside of your life to come out. You, The greatest you you will ever find is going to come because you allow God to take you through the things you've got to go through. Knowing that when he takes you through it, he's right there with you. And Father God, I declare right now. That you cause our grain, Lord God, to come out. Cause your strength to be edified inside of us. That, Lord God, when people see us, they don't see us, they see you. They don't see our whining, they don't see our griping, they don't see our complaining. But instead, they see the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ in us. Take us deeper, Lord. Take us deeper, Lord. Take us deeper. Father, we love you. We love you. If you want to just hang around in the presence of God, just do it. We're not going to have just a formal dismissal. We're just going to hang around because the Holy Spirit's moving. And I don't want to rush anybody out. If you got to go, you can feel free to go. But I think the Holy Spirit has some personal work He's wanting to do in us. Feel free to hang around. I love you. But more than that, Jesus Christ loves you. And He's got so much more for you in mind than what you got for yourself. But it's going to be a whole different walk than you've ever had. It's going to be different feelings you've ever than you've ever had. It's going to be uncomfortable at moments. But I'll tell you, it's going to be grand overall. When Jesus Christ is the King and the Lord of all, Brother Sanders, it's going to be greater, greater, greater. Come on. If you want to hang around here, then just... Let the Lord marinate on you just a little bit and take you into some deeper places in Him. Because I'm telling you, very quickly, you're going to see God do some incredible things around you.
Cause I know 